Hey guys, it's Robin, Our Silent Crafts. This is Talk To Me Tuesday for Tuesday, August 22nd, 2017. This past week's been a busy one, but it has not been busy in the craft room. I spent a lot of time running errands and doing chores around the house. So thankfully I got a lot of stuff last time because this time it's not as much. Like I figured, I did cast on another sock. This time this one will be for me it is out of some mystery yarn from, it's not hand dyed, it's probably from a box store. Um, no clue what it is. It's pinks and oranges, kind of like a sunset, it's really nice. I decided to go ahead and put in a purple heel. I'm just at the point on the first sock of turning the heel, so right now it kind of looks humongous. Here's a better picture. With my mystery quilt, we finally reached clue eight last week where we got to sew our blocks together. Once we got to the point where it's just two blocks, it was really easy to kind of guess at what we were going to do. One block is pretty much the same all the time and the other one we just turned on each one. The block went one way on an even row and we turned it to go a different way on an odd row. I think clue nine is where we're going to go ahead and add a border to it because in the beginning we chose a border fabric. But mine already measures 45 by 63 and I think that's going to be enough. I used yardage for the white, but everything else is basically scraps. Definitely the small two and a half inch squares were all from scraps. This was actually a pretty good design to use up all those little bits and pieces that I have stashed away. still have to figure out backing fabric for it. I know with that size I don't have any I don't have any extra wide backing or regular backing or whatever that's going to fit on it so I'm going to have to piece that one also. I'm not sure what yet. We'll see. So as it stands without the borders it measures 45 by 63 and I think that's a pretty good size just for keeping on the couch or a lap quilt or whatever or a small child so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at that. I really don't feel like putting borders on it. I have no clue how I'm going to quilt it. Uh, my first thought is to just free motion quilt it. There's a lot of seams on the back. Here's a close up. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of seams and half the time they didn't tell us which way to iron them to the left to right inside. And some of them, it wasn't gonna be easy to open them. So there's just too many seams, but I'm hoping that I could be able to free motion over it and not make a big hot mess out of it. We'll see. I did work on the Christmas zigzag last week. What I ended up doing is I went ahead and I free motioned in the white spaces and just kind of did a meander all around. And in the colored zigzags, I'm, I went ahead and just did some straight line quilting. I put two on each side and then just one down the center. To hope to give it a little bit of a uh, when it when I wash it hopefully it'll wrinkle up nicely and of course I patched the back and remember if I showed you the back last week or not but this is where the back stands so that's pretty much all I worked on this week these two quilts and the socks next week we'll be finishing up quilting the Christmas zigzag and getting the binding put on that which will mean some more practice for the self binding foot which I need Got to try something different on the corners because the last quilt, when I used the self binding, the corners rounded, and I really don't like when my binding corners round on a rectangular square quilt. If I'm lucky, I'll almost have a pair of socks done by next week. And I also have to work on piecing the back for this quilt and maybe getting pin basted so that'll be set up to be quilted. But that's it for me. Looking forward to everyone else's videos. Bye!